I created a pretty cool Rust library, GenAI. One client, one API for OpenAI, Gemini, Olama, Anthropic, Cohere, and more to come. In this episode, we are going to learn this library with some cool examples. And in the next episode, we will do a code review of the design patterns and best practices I am using when building this library. So that is going to be pretty cool as well. And best of all, I will be using this library in the upcoming Awesome App Reboot, which will be a Tori application for building and running AI agents, which will come later this summer. So make sure to like and subscribe. It's going to be a cool ride. Okay, enough talking. Let's start coding. So the library is GenAI, and right now we are going to take the version 0.1.1, .1, and we are going to lock it because the 0.1.x might have some breaking changes, and then 0.2.x and on will follow the same there more strictly. So what we do is we go to our cargo to ML. I like to have section like that, and then we're going to say GenAI, and that would be our 0.1.1. .1. So now we can go to our main.rs. We can hide the navbar, and now we're going to add a couple of imports. And so the first one here is going to be our chat message and our chat request from the GenAI chat. Then we import our client, and that again is a single client for all of the AI providers. And then we're going to import a little print utility here, which is printing the chat stream. So now we have our main here is async, and I like this pattern. I have a video here that talks about uh, my error best practices, so that I'm following that. So now we are ready, so we're going to do our let client, and again that is one client for all, so client, and we're just going to use the default. So typically when you have an infallible constructor that takes no arguments, it's a good idea to implement default, it follows the Rust, the idiomatic pattern. Then we're going to have our let chat request, and that is going to be a chat request. And in this case, I have a new that takes a vector of chat messages. So I'm going to do like that, because this way is kind of formatted nicely. So that is just for formatting more than anything else. So I'm going to have a chat message. And the first one is going to be the system, which is the instruction. And we're going to be answer with one sentence. That is the system we are giving to the model. And then after we're going to do a chat message user. And then the very cool thing about this lib is that some AI providers doesn't have the system as a message or whatever, but that everything is normalized for us. So it's, it's very nice. So now this is the question, which is why is the sky red? So that is our messages. Now let's go down. So now we're going to have our model. And for now, we're going to use the GPT-35. It's actually very cheap and it works pretty well. Obviously, we need to have the OpenAI key in the environment variable. We're going to see that later. And then we'll have our println here, just for us. A little bit of formatting, that works pretty well. Answer, and we're going to say from model. And it will make more sense later. That is the things. And now, the cool thing is we just do a let chat response. We're going to do a client, and we just do an exec chat and we want the stream because it's a coolest one. We give the model, and we're going to give the chat request, which is what we have. And then it takes another argument, which is the option, if we want to customize the behavior. Right now, the API is relatively simple, but I'm going to add much more later. But right now, we can give none. And that will return a future here. So what we need to do is in the wait, and we can do the question mark because we have the box in. So now what we have back is a chat stream response, which has a stream, and we can use a print chat stream, and we can give the chat response. And that takes an option as well that we can set to none. That would be async, obviously, so we need to do that. That's it. So what we've seen here is that the client doesn't know about the model or even about the chat request. The chat request doesn't know about the model or even about the client. Here we have the model, which is just a string, and that is when we exec that we put everything together, the client, the model, and the chat request. So now that we have that, we could do a cargo run that will compile, and then we'll get this error here because we don't have the OpenAI key. So what we want to do is you do the export uh, OpenAI API key, and that you will put your key over there. So I'm going to do that, you get your key, and again, the, the 3.5 is super cheap, so it's, it's not worthwhile to look at price when we learn. Okay, so I put my key, I can do a cargo run, 
and that will get the streaming response like that. Now, what I actually like to do is cargo watch run, and I have a little alias. I'm going to put it in the screen, and that will run the things in a pure quiet mode with a clear and everything, such as I don't really like noise when I code. So that is pretty cool. We already have the streaming, and every time we're going to press save, it's going to refresh the thing. So the answer will be a little bit different here. That is AI. Now, the cool thing is, obviously, we can put GPT-4.0, and that is still very cheap, yeah? So when we do one request once in a while, it's fine. And then if we press save, that will refresh, but now we get the answer of GPT-4.0. But the real cool thing here is that we can put any model of any providers. So for example, we can put Claude 3 here. This one is the cheapest one. And I have the Anthropic API key in my environment variable. And if you press save, that is what we get from Claude. And then we can put Gemini. And then if we press save, that will give us the Gemini thing. And we can even put the Olama. So that will go locally by default. So for example, we can put Lama 3. And that will be the response from Lama 3. Or we can put Mixtral, press save. And that will give us that. So obviously, I've already installed this model from Olama. So everything has been set up with the Olama command line. And that is just a way to ping the Olama server. So let's go back to our GPT-3 Turbo for now. And now we can actually use that to have a conversation. So for example, let's say that Reza to have only one question over here. We're not going to have this guy. So we're going to remove that. And we're going to create a let questions. We're going to make an array. I'm using the same technique here to have the formatting right. And then we're going to put our question over there. And then we're going to have the follow-up question, which is going to be, why is it blue sometime? Question mark. So that is to check here that is we're already in the conversation because otherwise the it, it won't be able to infer it. But if it's inside a conversation, it will be able to answer this second question. So we're going to show how we can do that very simply. And in fact, the API is pretty cool because we can do that or we can do a simpler way, which is more intent driven in this case, which is going to be the default. And we have a build up pattern setters, which is with system. And then we're going to put our system. So that is equivalent to the other one in the chat. And again, the API will normalize everything depending on the providers and so on. So now that we have that, we're going to have to put this one mute because what we're going to do is we're going to take this block, put it in our for loop. Now, if we press save, we should have a compiler here because we need to clone it, which is fine. And before we can answer here, if we run, it will answer empty in a way. So we need to add a question. So for that, we're going to have some print slash n question, and that will be our question. So the type of question is reference of STR, which is good. And then we're going to have our chat track. So the consuming builder pattern here, builder or seller builder pattern, is going to be chat rec, append message, and then you guessed it, which is do a chat message user, and we give the question. And the way that this API works here, it takes an implementation of E2 string. So I can put a reference of STR or a string, and everything will work fine. And will be cloned only if needed. That is a convenient way. And then last, let's go down a little bit, and we're going to have our chat rec equal. So it's actually our print chat here. It will also return the concatenated string here. So that is a convenient API. So we can do something like that, response. And so that will be the string, which is a concatenated string of the stream. So that is pretty cool because now we can take the response and we're going to add it to our chat request. Chat request. And that, in short, is what OpenAI is doing, the server, before sending the thing to their model here. They always do that, concatenate again all the thread. So we do a chat rec, append message, chat message, and that will be the assistant. And the content here will be our response. So this way, we're putting it back there. And because we clone it over there, it's fine. That can consume it. And then it will get filled up all the time. So everything is working pretty nicely. So now if we go back to our terminal and we press save, that will do the first question from GPT-3 and then the second question. And even if we have the it, it knows that we're talking about the sky because it gets the whole thing, the whole thread. So that works pretty nice. And so that is already pretty powerful. And again, the cool thing is about that is that if we want to change the model here and to say, hi, oh, I want to use my local or cloud model, number three, that will work the same. 
So that is pretty cool. Okay, so now the power of this model here is because we abstracted the model from our API and from the chat request, what we could do actually just to have fun is we could have multiple models in the same conversation. So for example, here we could have Llama 3 that will answer the first question, and then we could have GPT 3.5 that will answer the second question. And GPT-3.5 will get also the question and the answer of the first one, obviously. And so the way it works here is now we're going to put an S here to be nice, and we're going to have a into iter, such as we iter through the questions, and we just want into iter because they are already reference of STR. And then we're going to use a zip models. So that will kind of combine the two array and we will return now a tuple of each value. So you have to have the same number, otherwise it will be weird, but that is just for the demo. And so that means that we're going to have question and model. Okay? So now we have both here, the question and the model, so that will allow. And actually our code will work as is. So now if we press save, we're going to see that the question gets answered first by our lemma three, and then the second question answer by GPT-3.5. But because anyway, regardless of the model we are talking to, we are always sending back everything because model doesn't remember anything, then it works fine because the GPT-3.5 gets the whole thread anyway. So everything is good. And so obviously this is a little silly example here, you wouldn't do like that. But for agentic frameworks where you want to orchestrate different agents, different instructions, sometimes we have steps that doesn't have to use expensive models and other steps that needs to use more expensive models. And those steps could be part of the same conversation or the same answer of a message. That is the concept of the agentic orchestration. In the next episode, we will do a code review of the design patterns and best practices I'm using when building this library. So make sure to like and subscribe. Big thanks to Crab Nebula for their sponsorship. And by the way, if you know a company that needs help modernizing their cloud application with AI and or Rust, feel free to send them my way at jamie.shun at brysnow.com. We have been helping companies build next generation applications for the last decade and a half. Until next one, happy coding.